Hey folks, welcome once again to another episode of the Solar Punk Farmer. Today, we are going to talk about fish. Specifically, we are going to talk about how to properly transfer fish from one aquaponic system into another. Now, as an aquaponic farmer, this is something that you should really know how to do. Whether you operate multiple systems like me, or if you just have another friend who practices aquaponics who wants to give you a couple fish. So I'm sure that different people in the aquaponics community have a few different approaches as to how to do this. There are probably some variations. This is what I have found works best for me in my three years of experience with aquaponics, working with primarily feeder goldfish and tilapia. So one thing that you have to understand about transferring fish from one aquaponic system to another is that you are putting them in a completely new environment. And fish are very sensitive to environmental changes, particularly when it comes to pH, temperature, and light conditions. So one of the keys when it comes to minimizing mortality rates and ultimately the amount of stress your fish experience from the transfer is to match these three environmental variables as closely as possible between your two aquaponic systems. And the other thing that's important to do is to maintain good water quality for your fish if you are transporting them. That means minimizing ammonia buildup and keeping dissolved oxygen levels as high as possible. Oxygen can run out extremely quickly if you're keeping your fish in a bucket or another small container while you're transporting them to a new site. So I recently had to transfer a couple fish from my home system here to a client. So full disclosure, I actually did film the footage on two separate days. I ended up doing two separate transfers, but in terms of water chemistry, and other important parameters, not much actually changed in those two systems in between those two transfers, so it doesn't really matter. Just thought I'd let you guys know because I'll be wearing different clothes and whatnot, you know, so. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to it. I'll show you guys how it's done. Let's go. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is match the pH of the donor system to that of the receiving system. A rule of thumb that I like to follow is to get the pH of both systems to within 0.2 of each other. A pH change of 0.2 is barely noticeable for most fish commonly used in aquaponics, and that's exactly what we want if we want to minimize stress. Here I'm using the API test kit. Their low range pH solution is easy to use and has a pretty good resolution, but it's always better to use a digital meter if you have one. If you need to change the pH of either system, I would only adjust it by 0.2 per day until you reach the target level. My system at home is testing at about 6.8. I recently checked the receiving system and it was testing at about 6.7, so we're set to go. It looks like I don't have to use any of the buffering agents that are on screen. Alright, let's catch us some fish. Make sure that you have clean hands before touching the water in the fish tank, as you don't want to introduce any contaminants into your system. I designed my fish tank to have removable solids lifting outlets, or SLOs, so that fish can be caught more easily. Here you can see me removing them. Fish are very fast and certainly do not like foreign objects entering their home, so they will evade you by hiding inside or around any objects in the fish tank. Being able to remove plumbing components will allow for a quicker and cleaner catch, making the process less stressful for the fish. My tilapia are pretty decent sized, so I like to use a fairly large net of sturdy construction to catch my fish. A net like this should be easy to find online or at your local pond supply store. There are also telescoping nets available if you are working with a bigger fish tank. When it comes to actually using the net, I find that it's easiest to start at the bottom of the tank and sweep the net towards the wall in one fluid motion. It helps to trap the fish against the wall of the tank and then guide them towards the surface with the net before lifting them out of the water. Have a little patience and make sure not to be too aggressive with the net. Minimize contact with the fish's body, as you don't want to wipe off any of their protective slime coat. I would restrict any handling of the fish to through the net, as shown here. After you have caught a fish, gently lower it into your chosen transfer vessel. I prefer to use 5 gallon buckets for small amounts of fish and food grade 55 gallon drums if I am transporting fish in large numbers. For fish of this size, I would recommend keeping no more than 3 per 5 gallon bucket full of water from your aquaponics system. Figure about 1 to 1 1.5 pounds of fish for every 5 gallons of water at a maximum but your requirements may vary depending on the species and the size of the individual fish. If needed, you can always use a larger vessel. The polypropylene tough storage totes you can find at your local hardware store are another great option, as polypropylene is generally pretty safe for fish. They come in a range of sizes up to 40 or so gallons, and those will work if your fish need more space. Overcrowding will increase ammonia loading in the water and will make it more likely that your fish will injure themselves during transport, which can sometimes be fatal. I find that heavy duty gasketed lids work best if you're using 5 gallon buckets. In any case, you're going to want a strong lid with a fairly good seal. 
Drill a hole in the center of the lid with a hole saw so that you can insert an air line with an attached air stone to keep the water oxygenated during transport. Be sure not to move the bucket around too much and set it down gently while handling it. I picked up this battery powered air supply from my local pet store. It's not very good quality and isn't very strong, but it gets the job done if I'm only transporting one bucket of fish relatively short distances. It's better to get an inverter that fits into your vehicle's 12 volt auxiliary power outlet and use it to run an AC powered air compressor. The clock is now ticking. Ammonia will begin to build up in the water, so it's important that you get them into their new home as quickly as possible. A little longer than a few minutes later. Now that we've made it to the receiving system, it's time to get the fish acclimated. I tested the water off camera just to verify that the pH was within range. In order to best acclimate the fish to the receiving system's water, I recommend dumping out half of the water in the transport bucket and topping it back up with water from the system. Be careful as you don't want the fish to fall out. After you are done, be sure to replace the bucket lid and air stone to ensure that the fish have enough oxygen and to prevent them from jumping out. Wait about 10 minutes before introducing the fish to the tank. Having two buckets on hand will help with the introduction process. I like to rest the net on top of the second bucket and pour all the water into it. The fish will land directly in the net so that they can be quickly and easily released into the system. Gently lower the net into the fish tank and pull it away slowly so that they are allowed to swim freely into their new home. Unless something went very wrong that led to a fish death within one to two days, such as an injury, there is usually a lag time between a transfer and the effects of any resulting stress. Transfer stress can lead to a compromised immune system, so I would watch out for any signs of disease within about three weeks of introduction to the new system. After three weeks passes without any issues, you can be sure that the transfer was a complete success. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Solar Punk Farmer. I have a special announcement to make. So I did receive multiple requests on my strawberry video on how to dose phosphorus in an aquaponic system. And it turns out I actually do have a phosphorus deficiency issue in my aquaponic system because I'm growing so many fruiting crops and because I'm not dosing the water with phosphoric acid since I'm running an RO system. So I am currently in the process of developing a phosphate dosing regimen for my aquaponic system. I am testing phosphate levels in my aquaponic system every other day to see how quickly it is being removed by the plants so that I know how frequently I need to dose and how much I need to dose with. I'm shooting for a target range of 30 to 40 parts per million of phosphate in my system since I am growing an abundance of fruiting crops and I want to make sure that I can get good yields. So stay tuned for that video. It might take a little bit of time for me to come out with it because it might take me a little bit of trial and error to get things right. Anyways, thank you once again for tuning in to the Solar Punk Farmer. I will see you guys next time. Ciao.